Since 1929, the National Council of Farmer Cooperatives has been the voice of America's farmer co-ops. Our cooperative members handle, process, and market almost every type of agricultural commodity, furnish farm supplies, and provide credit and related financial services. America's farmers and ranchers, and the co-ops they own, must have the certainty of a farm bill that provides the flexibility, resources, tools, and technologies needed to meet the challenges of a growing world. In 1973, an idea was hatched that continues to have an impact on present-day farm policy. It was then that lawmakers merged farm programs and food stamps into one piece of legislation. The thought process was that we had to get a farm bill. And we, we could pass it through the Senate because every senator, represent, almost every senator, represented farmers. And so, you know, enough farmers who could get a vote out of Senate, Democrats or Republicans. But when you got to the House, you had so many city representatives, whether it's New York or L.A. or whatever, any big city. And to many, this was their one conservative vote by voting against the farm bill. And every time there's a farm bill, every four or five years, it gets closer and closer and closer, and as I remember, the last one before we added food programs passed the House by one vote. And so the next farm bill, we didn't have the votes. A lot has changed since the days when Richard Nixon was in the White House and Earl Butts was the Secretary of Agriculture. Farm programs are vastly different and the food stamp program has become SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. The nutrition title of the Farm Bill has also changed. New programs have been added, like the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program and the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, which provides fresh fruit and vegetables to school children throughout the day. But the logic behind a joint bill still remains. By joining the food and farm language together, lawmakers can get votes from two different coalitions. Let, let, let me put it this way. We don't have a chance of protecting SNAP. Um, you know, uh, without the farm groups. And I, so I am grateful uh, to them for, you know, understanding the importance of the program, but actually willing to stick their necks out on the line and say, you know, Congress, don't screw around with this. In 2013, a series of amendments on the House floor led to the farm bill being defeated. Eventually, the chamber took up a split farm bill as a way to get to conference with the Senate. Whether or not it will happen again remains to be seen, which has some farm policy wonks on edge. Those kinds of things are... Um that's really not conducive to getting a bill passed. While many use nutrition as a way to demonstrate the urban and rural coalition used to pass farm bills, hunger isn't just an urban problem. According to the Department of Agriculture, 15% of rural households are food insecure, a rate slightly higher than their urban counterparts. The House Agriculture Committee has had nutrition policy under a microscope since Committee Chair Mike Conaway ordered a soup-to-nuts review of the programs. That led to an extensive hearing series studying all sides of the nutrition title and a 65-page report detailing committee findings. Now, questions remain about what lies in store for the future of federal nutrition programs through Farm Bill Action or even House GOP welfare reform efforts. Could the benefit be altered? Could work requirements be on the table? What about block granting the program and giving more control to the states? There's also concern from program supporters that groups like the House Freedom Caucus and Heritage Action might lead the charge to split the legislation. In public comments leading up to the Farm Bill deliberations, Conaway has often said some variation of this. There will be those who want to try to split the Farm Bill and argue about uh, moving those separately. Uh, quite frankly, I don't necessarily see the advantages to doing that. I am driven. I am committed 110% to getting them both authorized on time before the 2018 uh, trigger comes up. If the easiest way to get that done would be to split them into two pieces and move them separately, then why wouldn't we do that? But I don't hear anybody talking about doing that who isn't intent on killing the farm bill part. They don't really think they can kill SNAP, but I think they think they could kill the farm bill part. And I'm spectacularly uninterested in those kind of conversations. So in all likelihood, we'll be together, but we'll have that conversation. It's process. It's not policy. It's process, and I'm committed to getting the process through to making it happen. And if the process leads to a split bill, many have serious doubts about the legislation's chances. It should be together anyway. I mean, it's all concerning food and 
how you raise it and how you produce it and market it and refine it and put it on the grocery shelf. That comes from the farmer and on the other end you've got people on the other end, on the consumer end, taking it off the shelf. So it doesn't make any sense to keep it apart. If they split the nutrition title from the farm bill, um, I'm willing to bet my house that there'll be no farm bill. One thing's for sure, nutrition programs will be a serious point of contention as lawmakers try to draft a new farm bill. And there is a lot at stake for the health of school children, seniors, and millions who live in both rural and urban areas. You know, because if making sure people in this country don't have enough to eat is not a priority, Christ, I don't know what the hell is a priority. I mean, this is, this is basic stuff. Um, and if it doesn't fit into the right-wing talking points, you know, then get over it. But, you know, we're all elected here to help people and um, not make their lives more miserable, not hurt them. And so um, I hope that, um, you know, I hope that all my concerns about what might be coming down the road are unfounded, you know, um, and I'm, I'm hoping for the best, but I'm preparing for the worst. And, um, and we're, we're going to be ready for this fight. I mean, if they want to go after this program, they can be prepared for one hell of a goddamn fight because some things are worth fighting for and this is one of them. <laughs>